I lost my older brother when I was 14. He was amazing in every way. He was only 17 when he got in a horrible car accident on the way home from basketball practice. When I got picked up early from school that day, I knew something wasn't right. There was a pit of dread in my stomach. When I got in the car and asked my mom what was wrong, she burst into tears. He died in the hospital the next day. I was in the room when it happened. I recall that his body was unrecognizable, covered in burns and cuts and scratches and horrible wounds. I was sitting in the armchair in his hospital room when sudden, loud, mechanical beeps filled the room and all the machines he was hooked up to started going crazy. A million different nurses and doctors rushed into the room, running in and out, talking and yelling and calling out directions. I tried to get to my brother, but the nurses wouldn't let me past. I hit them, scratched them, clawed them. I screamed and yelled. All of a sudden, the doctors and nurses stopped hustling around and backed away slightly from the hospital bed. I shook my head in disbelief. My mother, who had gone to the bathroom, walked back into the room to be greeted with the sight of my brother lying dead on the bed. She covered her hand with her mouth and shoved the doctors out of the way. The days and weeks following were all a blur. All I know is that I never once cried over the loss of my brother. There was no grief only a strange emptiness, the inability to have any emotion. I stayed locked in my room for months, doing nothing but staring at the wall and sleeping. Me and my brother were like two puzzle pieces. You could only see our full personalities if we had each other. Without him, I would always be empty, always be devoid of any emotion. I was numb. He was a star basketball player. He had earned countless scholarships to countless colleges for his sportsmanship. He wasn't even tall. He was shorter than me. There was just something about him. He was impossible to beat. One of his objects that was given to me was his basketball. I don't know why I got it. I didn't have an athletic bone in my body. He had the basketball since he was nine. I don't know how it's lasted this long, honestly. It's a basic, rusty orange Wilson basketball. I kept it close to me, thinking that maybe, just maybe, it would make me feel complete again. Obviously, it didn't. One night, when I was longing for my brother more than usual, I took the basketball outside and tried to throw it into the hoop we had set up in our driveway. I had never been able to make a basket before in my life, but the basketball went straight through the hoop, nothing but net. I chuckled to myself. 
It was my brother's basketball. Of course it went straight in. I retrieve the ball and toss it again. It hit the rim, but still went straight in. Now this was weird. Just to experiment, I tossed the ball far to the left of the hoop. To my amazement, the ball bounced off of a tree, circled around the rim once, and then fell in. I let out a small laugh. Thanks for the help, Jason, I said as a small joke to myself, addressing my lost brother. The ball rolled towards me, on its own. I shook my head, thoroughly believing that I was just freaking myself out at this point. I picked up the ball and held it away from my chest cautiously. The ball rolled up my arms and nestled into my chest. Was I dreaming? What was happening? J Jason? I stuttered. Is that you? The ball tilted one way and then another. It looked like it was nodding its head, yes. the first time since my brother's death, I cried. I sobbed. I curled up on the pavement and hugged the basketball close to my chest. I held it tighter than I've ever held anything before. I wasn't going to let him go again. My shoulders shook with sobs as I curled up even tighter into a ball, cradling Jason's basketball. I let all of the tears that I had held in since his death out, and the ball shook slightly, as if comforting me. Eventually, I struggled to my feet and went back into my bedroom, sniffling. I hugged the ball tightly as I slept. I slept better than I had for months. The next day, I couldn't bear to let the ball out of my sight. I thought I was probably just going insane with grief, but I still refused to part with it. I shoved it into my backpack and made my way to school. After gym class, I picked up my backpack and made my way out of the locker room and into the main gym, walking toward the exit to go to my next class. I felt a tug on my pack. Where are you going in such a hurry, Christopher? A voice sneered. Liam. For whatever reason, he hated my guts. Just to algebra, I said nervously, trying to keep walking. Liam's grip tightened on my backpack. Let's see what you got in your bag first. A smart guy like you must have some interesting stuff, Liam said with a smile. He heaved my backpack off of my shoulders. I spun around. Jason's basketball was in there. Liam pulled the ball out of the bag. You're horrible at every sport there is, he said, looking at me. Why would you have a basketball? Just trying to impress Rose? I blushed. Rose had been my crush for years. She was great at sports. 
I should go tell Rose that you've been practicing, Liam said. She can come see you perform for her after school. Be here after 8th period, loser. Don't show up, and I destroy you. He threw the basketball at me. Hard. The ball came at me fast, and it looked like it hit me. But in reality, Jason slowed it down just before it hit me, so it wouldn't hurt. Thanks, bro. Eighth period came and went. I was terrified. But what if this was all in my head and I bombed in front of Rose? I couldn't risk not showing up, though. Liam kept his word. When I walked into the gym, Liam and Rose were both there. Rose seemed confused, and Liam wore a smug grin on his face. I took a deep breath and pulled out the basketball. I threw it, and it went right through the hoop. Rose gave a cute little half-smile, clearly pleasantly surprised. Dumb luck, Liam called. I'll bet you can't bounce it off the wall and get it in the hoop. I smiled, knowing that Jason had my back. I tossed the ball at the wall, and it bounced into the hoop. I retrieved it and spun the ball in my finger like a Harlem Globetrotter. Rose clapped. Nice job, Christopher. I have to go. See you tomorrow. Rose called, gathering her things and giving me a goodbye wave. As soon as she left, Liam put his fist in his hand, threateningly. Listen, I don't know what kind of tricks you're playing, but I don't take very kindly to cheaters. I wasn't cheating, I insisted. Dude, I have to go home. Later. I brushed past him and headed for the door before a force tackled me from behind. Liam, get off! I called as Liam pummeled my back with his fist. Not until you admit you cheated. I'm telling you, I didn't... The force was lifted from my back before I finished talking. Liam had been knocked aside by Jason's basketball, and now he was frantically trying to stop the ball as it hit him repeatedly. I'll never forget the pure terror in his eyes. Jason is still with me now. I've gotten more confident since the night when I first discovered that he never left. I don't need to bring him with me everywhere, although he always does make me feel more confident. We have our own sort of language. I can have a conversation with him just by judging certain movements of the ball. I've told him that he doesn't have to stay here with me. I've told him that he can move on, and that I'll meet him on the other side. He insists on staying with me, and honestly, I can't be upset about that. Jason never left me. He'll always be with me, and he'll always protect me. I finally feel like myself. I have my brother again. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. 
If you want to see more, let me know in the comments below, and tell me what you thought of this narration. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for updates, and if you'd like to get early videos, shoutouts, high quality mp3 downloads of my narrations, and much much more, I'd appreciate it if you check out my Patreon page. It's a place where you can help support my channel while getting awesome rewards in the process, and every pledge helps out a ton, no matter the size. So if you'd like to see all the rewards I offer and consider becoming a patron, it'd mean a ton to me if you'd click the link in the description and just check it out. And don't forget to show some love to the amazingly talented authors who make these narrations possible. Have a good night, everybody. Cheers.